Hey everyone, welcome to another quick tip. Don't worry, I don't have any bad jokes for you this time. Today we're gonna to go right into some examples. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of questions on the community for people that wanna see more Python and R examples. So leading off of our recent videos, today I was gonna show you how you can do some data prep and put that right into a node into your data canvas. So if you're writing some R code or Python code where you're using some exotic functions that you want in your data prep or even just for modeling, you can take that and put it again right into the data canvas so it runs right when you load up your data. So let's take a look at an example. To start, I'm gonna use this New York City flight delay data that I got from the Bureau of Transportation. And you can see that there's lots of information about different flights, where they landed, where they're coming from, what their delay was when they arrived, things like that. So this is all in a CSV that's on uh, my local machine. And let's say I was in R and I loaded up that CSV and you know, I did something where I wanted to just select certain columns here. I'm using dplyr here, uh, a popular data wrangling uh, package for R. So you know, I selected some columns. I uh, filtered some rows here just to the first month. Uh, I sorted this by the flights, the year, month, and day. Um, I calculated and made some basic calculations here for the gain, which is arrival delay minus the departure delay, and the speed, which is the distance divided by the air time times 60. And then lastly, I'm printing this. So I'm just gonna run this, and you'll see it bringing in that CSV data and running the whole script, and then you know it's given me uh, this printout here of uh, the transform data that I wanna use. So what I can do is actually take this right into Spotfire, so I'm gonna copy it, and in Spotfire, I'm going to bring in this CSV data. Now, I could do this with not CSV data and not flat files, I could do this with information links and database data and all kinds of different uh, things, but I just, for this example, I'm gonna just do a flat file. So I can bring this in and I can go to transforms, and this is what we showed in the past, transforms on load. But um, I'm gonna bring it into the data canvas, uh, bring all the data in right now, and I think it's a little more illustrative in the data canvas. So, so first let me just bring in all that data. Let's visualize this with a table. You can see I got all of my columns here. This is a full data set. I'm gonna bring in the same data set and let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. So I'll just bring that in again, hit okay. And uh, here I'm gonna make this a uh, separate table because again, we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison. And I'll name this flight delay data prep. So let's do a side-by-side -side comparison here. So for this data prep table, um, again, I can because I have access to this data, I can go to transformations and add transformations and I can add a data function. But first I need to create this data function and save it to my library. So I'll go to tools and register data functions and I'm gonna call this New York City flight prep. And I want to use my dplyr package and I want to paste this in so this is that code that I just copied, right? Um, now, I need to make a couple changes just so it matches into the Spotfire data model. So what I wanna do is instead of reading from the CSV on my local drive, I'm gonna just make this an input table. And I need to make an output table too, because this is all getting passed through. So I'll show you what I mean in a second. I don't need this print. So instead, I'm gonna just say, you know, export or, or pass through, whatever and I'm gonna make um, an output table and I'm gonna assign that from my flights data frame, which is right there. So then I can set my input and output parameters. So I'll right click this and I'll make this an output parameter and this is gonna be output as a table. And for my input, I'll just right click this and make this my input parameter. I'll select all, the input's gonna be a table, so I'll hit table, I'll hit OK, and I'm gonna save this to my library. So I'm gonna say as New York City Flight Prep, that's the name of my data function, and I'll give it a keyword here where um, I'll show you why I'm giving a keyword in a second. But I'll just give it a keyword of tear, I'm using the tear engine in Spotfire to run this R code, and I'll save it there, and I'll close it. Now here, um, because I have access to this data, again, I can add transformations and I'm gonna add a data function. So it's a data function option. Now, the, this is all running on load, so you need to have access to your Spotfire library. And that's because the data is all being pre-processed as the application's loading, so that it doesn't have to bring it all into your Spotfire memory and then run everything separately. This is all running in flight, like as it's, it's, as it's coming in. So I'll say insert, and it will open up my library that I'm connected to. 
And because I put a keyword there as tear, I can easily find my data prep um, data function. So I'll hit OK here. And it's, it's asking me which columns I want to use. I want to use all the columns, so I'll hit OK. And it's giving me a little warning. This is innocuous. This is just telling me that certain packages uh, from the base R, uh, the base R language are being masked by dplyr. So this is a pretty standard warning. It's not, it's not any error or anything to be concerned about. But um, I'll hit OK here. And you'll see now it's telling me that there are different columns. There's new columns in this because I've added gain and speed and I've, and I've removed these other columns. And that's OK. That's exactly what I want. So I'll just hit OK. I, I can just hit OK here. Or if I had changed the names of my columns, I just need to match them across. You just need to you know, select something here, select something there, and match them across. So it knows how to map it within uh, the Spotfire data model. But here, I don't need to map anything. I'm just going to hit OK because I removed columns. And you'll see now that this is the new data table. So this is uh, the gain and speed here. And when I go into here, um, I can go into my visualizations columns. I have gain and speed I can add here. So for my data prep table, you can now see this is all for the first month. And I have these calculations. It's all been like filtered. That whole data prep has just been run in flight as this data was loaded. And again, use this for information links. Use this for whatever you want. It's a way to help you scale your work. Now, what if I wanted to use Python? So it's a little bit different with Python, but mostly the same. So here I have a Jupyter Notebook, and I have some different data prep here. And um, let's say I wanted to copy this into uh, Spotfire. So I'll go to Spotfire, and uh, in this way, when I create a data function, register data function, so starting in Spotfire 10.7, you have the Python uh, scripting option there as a dropdown. Um, and I can also make this New York City prep uh, for Python. And I'll paste this in here. Now, the couple steps you want to do differently here are that, um, one, uh, you're not putting your, li your libraries or your packages in in the input field. Instead, you're putting them in uh, your scripts. So make sure you have that in there. And then for your data function, since I'm using a pandas data frame, I want to do uh, PD, that's my pandas uh, library, and I'm going to do data frame and then data equals input. And at the end, I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the end here, and I just need to make sure my output is equal to my data frame. And then I would just set my input data frame, you know, I can uh, right click it, and I can also set the input parameter the same way we did it with uh, the R example. And I can do the same for output. I need to set the output parameter the same way uh, I did with the R example. Now bear in mind, if you have a lot going on in your data canvas and you want to do this downstream of the data load, you can do this anywhere by adding it right to your wires. You can add a data function anywhere you'd like. Um, I just did it on the data on load because I filtered columns and filtered rows. I wanted to reduce the amount of data that was brought into Spotfire's memory. Um, if you do it downstream, all of the raw data will be brought into Spotfire's memory, and then it will execute. So just keep that in mind. That's a key difference. So I hope this tip was useful for you today. Remember, there's lots of ways to integrate open source languages into Spotfire to make your workflows easier. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to keep getting new tips, and we'll see you next time.